Hey, what's up ladies and guys? Hey, we're gonna get the uh, Benford TS25 ready for some new rubber. We're gonna get some new tires put on these rims. So uh, welcome to this video. Not too many videos of me working on this because I did all the repairs and got it up and running before I actually started the YouTube channel. So um, check out some of the other videos I do have of it being used driving around, but I am going to uh, throw some new rubber on there. I got some really aggressive ags on the front right there and I am going to go with a less aggressive tire in the front. It looks more like a heavy duty uh, snow tire. Actually, I think it is a tractor snow tire. So hopefully it doesn't tear up the grass too much and uh, be a little easier on the road when I'm driving it on driveways. And then I'm gonna go with the Euros, which are on the back. I'm gonna go with another set of brand new Euros cause I'm satisfied with them. They don't need traction. The traction's in the front. So uh, we got to jack this thing up, take the tires off, and uh, clean the rims. I'm going to put a coat of uh, new paint on them. So today's up, we're going to just jack it up, get it up, and uh, take all four tires off. So let me give you a walk around. I'll show you real quick. These are really dry rotted, so that's the main reason. And I wanted to go wider tires in the front, the load carrying tires, but I can't find them for these rims. So once I get it to the tire guy, um, he's going to put the tires on these rims, and then we're also going to see if I can find another set of rims that are wider, that could take a wider, heavier duty tire for the front also. So uh, let me take you for a quick walk around, and uh, then I'll get started. So as I said, this is a Benford TS25 swing radial dumper. I picked this up a few years ago, and it had a blown clutch. The throw up bearing was completely wasted and I was able to find a new throw up bearing for it. It took me about three months to locate because there's no part numbers on it. But I was able to find one, took it all apart, put it all together and uh, works like a charm. It's actually my favorite little toy to drive around here. So what's one thing that's weird is I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but these two steer tires, the rear tires are towed in. So I'm not sure why that's they are that way, but they've been that way since I got it. So I'm gonna leave it that way. I did paint it when I did get it. It's dirty, obviously. But you have a three-speed transmission. Uh, you have one hydraulic valve. It's a dump, but it's a gravity down. And then you have the parking brake, which is that handle right there, which is on and off. It takes dues with fuel only. And there's two little switches on here. You have your fuel cutoff switch, but there's your oil cap right there. But right next to it, it's really hard to see. I'll try to stick the camera in there. You have a fuel cutoff switch. Let's see if I can come in from the side. <laughs> there you go. So the first thing to do when you turn this on, is you gotta stick your hand down in here and you have to push this in. There, and turn that that way. So that's like that. Then come over here. Make sure it's not in gear. Make sure your parking brake is on. And then you just have a key. And it's a single cylinder Lister, Lister diesel. It's gonna get really loud, listen. There you go. Now, to shut it off, turn this off and that's how you shut it off uh, obviously that's air cleaner so these are the tires that are on it they are old they leak and they're old school tractor tires they're front tractor tires basically and then here are the old ags in the front and these just tear up the lawn they really do so that's why I'm trying to get rid of, I want to get rid of them. I want to get uh, more of a, like a heavy duty truck tire, but see how skinny they are. They're six inch tires and supposedly that's all the rim can take. So we're going to try to find fatter rims too. Cause if you look, you can fit 
a 10-inch tire on here, no problem if you center it, and you'll still have two to three inches of clearance right there. Just to distribute the weight so I don't sink in the lawn so much. That's your battery box, and then what's cool is there are three lug tires in the back. In the back. So the steer tires are three lug. The front are five lug. So that's pretty cool. You can swing this. Walking around in circles here. You can swing this around by this right here. And then this will manually swing. So you could dump over this tire. Or so you could have it dump over this tire. Or you could dump over that tire. Um, I have vice grips on it right now. Just because it doesn't, it goes too far through. So I got to weld. I got to weld a stopper basically on that. But yeah, it uh, it's my favorite toy. I'm getting ready to use it at a job. So I don't want to take a chance on getting flat tires. So I just want to get all new rubber on it. Plus I'm keeping it. And, that, and this way I could paint the rims nice, nice also. Not nice, nice, but throw some black Rust-Oleum on there once they're off. All right, well, let me uh, get some jacks and jack stands and get this thing up in the air. Well, that went pretty easy. I got the tires all pressure washed. I actually even pressure washed the buggy. 
And uh, once it all, everything dries, I'm gonna clean up the rims just a little bit. I'm only gonna paint the outside. I'm not gonna paint the inside because there's a bunch of old concrete from the old owner on there. And if I paint it, I have a feeling it's gonna just uh, keep it in there permanently and won't let it fall off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint the outsides. I'm gonna clean them up a little bit. There's still a little bit of chunks of concrete when I bought it. I got most of it off, um, but it's still a little bit. So I'll try to chisel some of that off. And then once they dry, I will put a coat of black uh, gloss paint on the outside. And then once the buggy dries, I will go around and touch up all the spots that I did not get or wore off when I originally painted it. So it'll look nice and clean for the next job because it's going to be there for like three weeks. So, all right, well, I'm done for today on this one. I'll see you when I get back um, or when, when we come back. And it will probably be painting the tires or I will probably just show you once they're done and uh, show you once the new tires are installed on the rims. All right, well, that's a concrete buggy Benford TS25 swing radial tipping dumper is the official name of it. It's like a 1980s. See you when we get back. Well, there's a can of black paint and a can of gray paint. Smoke gray is a color. Touched it all up. Got the outside of the wheels painted. Good enough. These are all the same color now. Not bad. And I did the spots that I missed when I ran out of paint underneath there. That was yellow because I had ran out of paint when I originally redid the buggy. And obviously you could tell we got a couple inches of rain last night. So looks a lot better. It's washed, it's clean. All the, I did a couple spot sprays back here where I had chipped some of the paint off, dropping boulders in there. So at least it'll look good going to the next job. Gotta get some new tires later on in the week. So that paint will be cured by then. And uh, hopefully we don't chip them up too bad when I go to put a new rubber on. All right, well, that's it for now on this on this little project. Hey, what's up guys? Hey, I uh, got the tires on the rims last night. It was a late night. It was like 9.30 at night by the time I got home. But I got the tires for the uh, Benford uh, TS25 concrete buggy on the rims. I'll show you those in a minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw some grease in some of the grease fittings on the back and the steering side of this buggy, and then I'm gonna throw the tires on. Um, there are a couple broken grease fittings on there that I cannot get out right now. 
So I'm just gonna grease the ones that I can, uh, throw the tires on it, get it off the jack stands, and uh, call this job done. All right, so uh, they're right there behind me. So I ended up not going uh, ag tires on this. I went with a tractor, um, kind of like a turf tire, but it's a little more aggressive than a turf tire. I think they call it a turf, I mean, a, a tractor snow tire. You'll see, but they're really skinny. They're still the same thickness because I can't, I only have a four inch rim, so I can't go any wider. I wanted to go wider tires to spread out the weight load on lawns, but I wasn't able to. So I ended up going with these tires and I got the same tires for the rear steering tires. I do believe they're called like a Euro. So I'll show you what they look like and uh, let me get some grease in these fittings and then we'll throw these tires on real quick. So here's uh, tires that I decided to go with. I painted the outsides of the rims only because I want to still try to get some of that concrete off eventually. And I don't want to paint over the concrete. So it'll wear off eventually and chip. So I went with these. These are pretty close to the originals that were on the machine. Um, they're six inch, 16, 16 inch wide. So six inches wide, 16 inch rim. So the, that's, that's only a four and a half inch rim. So that's the only size I can go with. Um, but they're basically tractor steering tires. And if you notice, there's only three lugs uh, to hold them on. So the rims are kind of hard to find for these. And they're called Euros. B, uh, BKT is a brand. And uh, yeah, they're traction front tires for a tractor. So these are non-directional, so I can put them on either side. So these will be the steer tires and the drive tires. I went with this. Instead of going with the ag tire, which is just basically big lugs, as you saw in the old ones, I went with these. I wanted something to have a little bit more traction and not cause so much damage on the lawn is a, the big thing, and kind of distribute some of the weight. So I don't dig in because whenever I drive it on the lawn with a heavy load, I actually leave those lug marks. So this will tear up the lawn more, but it'll be flat. Hopefully we'll see. So these are tractor snow tires, basically from what the description said, they're extra traction. The brand is D stone, D E E S T O N E. And, um, they are actually directional tires. If you notice your lugs here, they I, I have them like this, where they're facing forward. Um, so that way when it bites, I'll get more traction going forward. I don't have a problem going backwards with, cause all the weights on the drive tires. I have a problem going forward. So I'm putting them this way so I get more traction going forward. And uh, if, I, if I wanna switch it, then I'll just put this one back on this side and then it just changes the uh, direction. So that's one good thing. So we we mounted the two directional tires opposite. So I have that option to put them the lugs this way or put them the lugs this way to switch the tires on the rims. So we're gonna see how these work. Uh, they look they look nice even, and I even painted the rims and I tubed them all um, just to play it safe. Uh, these rims actually have rivets on the inside right here. So those are points of failure. So I figured, you know what, spend a little extra uh, time, do it once, do it right. So I threw two, I had the uh, tire guy throw tubes in it for me. On all four of them. And these are the same size, six by 16. All right, let me put this up front.
Well, there it is with the new tires, the paint touched up. I like it. I'm glad I went with these tires. The same, these are the same steer tire, same style. But here are the new front tires. Now you can see how the lugs are. So this will grab as it's going forward. And if I don't like it that way, or if it doesn't do what I want it to do, I'll just put this tire on the other side and I'll just reverse them. See, we, we put them on opposite. So that way, I, if I don't like it, I could do this and it reverses the lugs. I did not paint the inside of the buggy. I don't want to waste the paint, but the buggy used to be that yellow. And obviously the hopper is water water tight because I have about six inches of water in there. I got to dump down the driveway. Well, let me fire this thing up. Let me show you what it sounds like. I don't know if you've watched any of the videos, but it has a very unique sound. Let me show you the engine here. It's a single cylinder Lister diesel. There you go. I didn't wash it. I should have washed the engine. But yeah, there it is. It's a Lister diesel right there. All right, so it's a Lister diesel. I do believe it's a single cylinder right there, Lister diesel, diesel fuel. This is a decompression switch. So it's a very high compression, I guess. And this just makes it easier for the starter to turn over. Or if you're cranking it over by hand, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. And here's your oil fill. Here's your fuel shut off. This is a little toggle switch or a, a selector switch there. You can switch it down. That's on. That's off. That's how you shut the engine off. So you got to put it there to start it. Your key is over here. You turn your key on and then your electric start will work. If your electric start don't, oh, and then to shut it off, you, you don't even have, you don't even shut the key. Well, you turn the key off to save the battery, but you shut the fuel off by just turning, sticking your hand down in here again and shutting it off. Here's your oil dipstick right there. Always make sure you have oil and I'm going to start it. So that goes like that. Um, and then if you want, you can hand crank it right there. Here's the handle. And there you go. So you spin it counterclockwise and it will actually turn the engine over. I've never hand started it. Maybe we'll give it a shot. What do you say we try? So the first thing I'm going to do to hand start it is take this. I'm going to try to make it. Oh, I'm going to make sure the parking brake is on and it's not in gear. Parking brakes on to neutral. I'm going to take the compression, make it easy. Try to make it easier on myself. Take this, switch it forward. I gotta turn the key on. That would help. Ooh. I don't know how they do this. I didn't have that open. <laughs> there we go. Let's try it. There we go. That makes a big difference. This is a compression valve. 
so I didn't have it all the way open. But you can't you can't turn this over by hand with with compression. So you push that all the way forward, and then you can actually spin the engine over. And once you get some RPMs in it, just close the valve and it starts. So I shut it off by shutting the fuel valve off down there. So I'm gonna turn the fuel valve back on down in here. Compression valves forward, all the way forward. Let's get some RPMs going. I'm gonna crank it. Once I get some RPMs going, I'm gonna basically pull this out. And this is directional, so it won't grab it. But just so to make sure, once I have some RPMs, I'm gonna pull it out to make sure. That's what it grabs right there. That's there. And spin it that and then pull this out oh i did it too soon let's try it again of course it's not going to start like this now I don't think I'm closing the valve all the way. Let's try it again. Nope. There is an electric start, but we got to do it difficult. All right, I'm using the key. I started it once like that. So much easier. It is a very distinguishable, unique sound. Like I said, it's the only uh, single cylinder. You can hear it. There's a big centrifugal weight in there. All right, so I have the cover plate somewhere for that. So let me go see if I can find that so I can finally put this whole machine back together. Toolbox was open. Lift this up just a little bit. See how it's sitting on this? 
it's all wet paint, so you can't touch the gray. So let me get one of these tight. Nice. All right, well, I'm going to start this thing and I'm going to move it out of the middle of the driveway and I'm going to dump the water, get the water out of here. And uh, I'm just going to go park it out of the way. So I still have to, I have the drive shaft still yellow because it rotates, so I want to make sure I can see it. But, anyways, I still have the vice grips holding the, this is the turn mechanism. And this is a turn mechanism and it should have a plate welded on here that hooks onto here. And that lifts that dog up out there. And then that allows this barrel to spin. All right, well, let me fire this up and uh, park it out of the way. It's going to a job uh, next week. That's why I had to get the new tires on it. I wanted to make sure I had uh, didn't have any uh, mechanical issues once uh, once there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, 
got the new tires on the concrete buggy it's good to go for a job i think i'm going to change the oil in it before i bring it but uh we'll see i just changed it and it doesn't have that many hours on it anyways uh it should be ready for the job tires look good it rides really a lot smoother than it did before so uh another uh project accomplished check it off my list thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and if you feel uh, like you want to leave a comment please keep the language clean i want to keep it a kid-friendly channel check out some of the other videos and you can actually watch i have a couple of videos of me using this to do uh flower beds and a little landscaping around the house so all right well check you up on uh check up on some of the other videos and i will see you in the next one goodbye